stuff away. Go in there. You can do your face first or eyeshadow first. I know everyone does it different. If you do your eyeshadow first, it's just because you sometimes get follow under here and you know stuff falls on your face from the color. So that's why people or I do my face after. Um, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I'm going to assume you guys probably put foundation on first. So I'm going to do that. I also color correct my skin. So I, you can see I'm all red, blotchy, acne marks. I mean, anything. Uh, hair marks right here, which a lot of, if you don't have dark hair, but I do. Anything from waxing, once it starts to curl back, it looks like blue underneath. Um, you know, it's just life. For colors, I'm going to use this. It's LA Girl. It's reddish orange color. Um, it doesn't say, but anyways, it's like red orange. I'm just going to sweep it on. And this is going to balance out. A lot of drag queens use these for because if they have like beards or anything like that, it helps color it, match it up. I'm just going to, sorry, moving you, blend it out. And you could put this over or under foundation. I put it under, especially this. You don't want to put too much color because it is so dark. I just really lightly. And if, if I do put too much, it's too dark. I'll show you what I do because I'm red all over or acne marks or anything like that, I use green. This is probably CoverGirl. Yeah, CoverGirl, green. And I just dab it on and kind of blend it through. And it's also a good primer. So it'll help the foundation stick. And same with this. I don't do any particular spots because I'm so red all over. I do it, I just kind of blend it all over my skin. Same with my chin. I'm so red right there and to know your undertones so when they when you always hear people say like what's your undertone for different colors of makeup and you're like what the heck are they talking about if you like me I have a red undertone or if you have like you know if you're Hispanic for the most part most people are Italian or anything like that if you have a yellow undertone or an olive undertone that's what that means um you know stuff like that if you have like blue if you could see like your veins or you know like I almost have a little blue too I have a little mixture of all undertones so that's what it means because different foundations have like reds to it or yellows and stuff like that so you just kind of need to know your undertone and you can kind of match it like on the unique side you can match it it'll have like a little chart and you can cut it also ask you do you have these undertones that well this shade will be good for you and then I'm going to use yellow again in cover girl and this is for to match blue, how I have blue, you know, under eye or bags. You know what, really quick before I do that, I want to show you something else. Because we age and we have bags under our eyes, I got this in my boxy charm, and it's um, for bags under your eyes. I'm going to put a little bit, just a very, very little bit, and just melt it between my two fingers and that's always important is melting and getting your makeup warm that way it'll spread easier and I'm just gonna put it under my eyes and let it sit for a second that helps and I usually put it on my top too I just forgot today it just like soaks up any you know if your eyes are puffy or anything like that and it feels really cool I can feel it already so then anyways I still go under with the yellow and I just blend it Tap it in. You can use a beauty blender, whatever. I just use my fingers because it's easier and I get it more of a precise, um, you know, whatever. If you could already see, see how it's already evening out my whole skin. You can already tell. I don't use this often, but this is purple. This is good for right here for brightening your face. So I will sometimes use it. I'll put it right there, for instance. So, where you would usually highlight, so people will highlight it right here in their T-zone or like right here. I'm going to just add this. And again, it's good primer. So, all, this stuff on my face is going to help my um, foundation stick. And if it's too orange right there, I just add a little bit of the green or yellow and I just kind of tap it through so it's not too much. Just kind of smooth it out. And then the foundation goes over this. Okay, for foundation. 
I have Unique Scarlet or Organza. I'm usually Organza. I got Scarlet um, just because in the winter I we change our skin tones, obviously. So I figured this would match in the winter. Shake it good because again, the minerals, the minerals. Okay, so here's, I'm gonna just, for examples, just so I can show you, Scarlet. I'm always gonna like squeeze it to get any product out. So I squeeze it out, right, completely. And I hold, I pinch it closed. And I'm going to put it in and then open it and suck it up. So I should have product in there. And you just kind of drip it on your face. Or Unique gives you the beautiful foundation brush. It's got the little indentation in there. You're supposed to actually drip it, your product, in the center. And that's how you, see, put it on your face. So I'm going to mix up. I mix colors. And here's why. My skin is balanced, like dry and oily sometimes. Not too dry, not too oily. Because Unique is so, it's moisture. I mean, it's so creamy. I like mine a little more dry, just so it's not too creamy, if that makes any sense. Um, that and I also need to let people know, it's good to let this dry on your face. And if you want a good coverage, if you're thinking, oh, it doesn't really cover too much, depending on how your skin is, how you want it. Let it dry a little bit and then add another layer. So I'm going to add organza. I just want to sample the colors for you guys more than anything. See, I'm an organza shade. And you could also match your shades by when you people put it on their hand. You know, that can work. It's kind of hard because your hands are different than your face. Or if you put a little bit on your skin and when you blend it through, if you can't see any streaks, if it blends in perfectly with your face, then that's your color. So I'm still, this is still a little too light for me for right now, but in a, like a month or two, it'll match. But like this one, I know I have color correcting, but it blends right in. So that's how I know I'm organza. But I'm going to mix colors. I like to mix colors all the time because my skin's all different colors. So I will, I will mix these. Actually, let me do this so I can show you guys. Mix it on the brush, and then I put both Organza and Scarlet in there. And also, because like I said, it's really, really, really creamy. You can see the two different colors. I blend them in. And this is common. A lot of makeup artists use all different colors because everyone's shade is different. It's okay to get four different colors and blend it together. It might be a perfect match. I also use L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour. This is this is a full coverage. So you'll hear people say, do you want a light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage? Light coverage is just like a BB cream, just kind of like a tinted moisturizer. You know, if you don't, your everyday kind of look, you don't need too much makeup, you're gonna just put a little bit on with moisturizer, light coverage. Medium coverage is if you just want, you know, to cover up maybe some you know, scarring, marking, a pimple, anything like that, but you don't want a lot of makeup. You don't want it to look full on. That's medium. Full coverage is you want it, it's going to be a drill, real dry, stick to your face, and it's going to want to be full coverage. I mix all of my liquid with a full coverage because this is more of a clay based, so it's dry. And I do that because my skin, uh, you can't use full coverage completely when you're aging or mature, have mature, dry skin, wrinkles. Anything like that. If you have dry skin, wrinkles, aging, old. I shouldn't say old, mature. Um, because it will set in on your face and it'll look dry and it'll enhance any wrinkles, any dry, anything like that. So I mix them and I just kind of put it all over my face a little bit. And you could tell it comes out the tube really, really, it's like clay, see? It's really, really hard to spread around because it's real dry. So that's why I mix it because between this the clay in the other one and it'll blend really good and I just take my brush and dab you are not painting your face there's different brushes so if you have this kind of brush or where is it like this is a foundation brush anything like this that are shaped like this these are foundation brush you can either just paint it like this or you know however works for you my skin 
if I use these brushes, you can see the streaks a lot of time. And it's good to use them because, again, you can get in certain angles, you know, real specific. Whereas these ones, it's not. It's a little more messy. I use between this and my favorite, actually, is this one. It's because it's a real short thick stifling brush and so it really really gets in the pores and it doesn't a lot of product doesn't you know I don't lose a lot of product it, it doesn't like melt seep in there you know what I mean it's gonna just stay on the top and it's gonna really really spread it around it's a wide one so I I usually use this um but I will use this it's easier to use with this too because again it's not as, as thick as this one but just telling you options. Everyone's different. Or else you can use a beauty blender. A lot of people use a beauty blender. Really good quick tip is, I, a lot of people don't know, when you get these, you are supposed to get them damp. Whether you run it under a little bit of water or set it with setting spray, you kind of spray it just slightly damp. And that's because otherwise when you put the foundation on your face, it, the foundation is going to soak in here and you won't get a lot of product on your face. And it's going to be really dry and it'll give you moisture and make your face look more dewy. And again, if your face is more dew dewy after you're done, you can even take this, take a little damp and go over it. And it's going to really, it's going to bring all the products together and everything. So you can use a beauty blender also. I don't like to use a I feel like it sucks up a lot of product. For me personally, I, I use a brush. I just want to give you guys options. And you don't want to sweep. You're going to push it in your pores and just slightly go over because you don't want to move like the correction, the correcting liquid underneath. You don't want to shift anything on your face. And because I mixed it with Scarlet, see it is really light, but it's okay. We're gonna, I'll explain it to you in a second. It's better to be, have lighter foundation than it is to have darker for obvious reasons you don't want to look orange here and then have like you know orange under here you want to be lighter but you don't want to be too light because then you'll be able to see you know any kind of marks under your skin because it'll be almost translucent and I'm gonna get right under my eyes make sure you get in the creases of your nose under your eyes and it spreads so good I always keep my hair back in a headband just so it doesn't fall on my face, but I do go into my hairline. I just take a makeup wipe when I'm done and just kind of wipe it around. So I do do, I do do that. Some people, if they have red ears, they will even paint their ears. Um, I go underneath my neck and I'm wearing this today, but otherwise usually I would even go down further just to kind of match and if it's too much like you know you can see it i just kind of soak it up with the towel and i very carefully go around my eyebrows super careful otherwise i'll cry and same thing i'm gonna go right around here right around here center underneath where I have like wrinkles and stuff I really just push into it and you could feel it start to dry to your skin I don't go on my eyebrows because I don't want too much product on your eyebrow or sorry eyelids leave those blank because if you put too much stuff on your eyelids it'll look cracked you know like cracky when you put uh eyeshadow I'm gonna go into my hairline a little very careful over here And also, if you don't pluck, I use this. You can find them at Walmart, dollar store. You just kind of shave off any hairs. And it's really good to even get your face hairs. Every woman has them. It's nothing embarrassing. It's also good that you have a clean face and have no hairs or anything because the hairs on your face grab any kind of germs or, you know, like the makeup will set on it and won't go into your pores. It sets on the hairs more than anything. Uh, you can break out from having hair on your face just because it picks up so much, you know, germs and stuff like that. Whereas if it's clean, no hairs, um, 
it, your makeup really goes on smooth and your skin will actually be cleaner. Because I have always a lot of hairs right here. I mean, it's just what it is. And I'm just going back and forth. You can always feel when it starts to like set in, it starts to dry. All right, let me get a, a mirror so I can make sure I'm getting really, really good. So where I have wrinkles right here, I will always, like make a face like this so I stretch it out and really dab in. And same with this, see, because you can see the makeup, I'll dab in just to make sure it doesn't look caked on in there. Okay. Get in my nose, the sides. I'm really pushing into my pores. The good thing about using a primer is that it not only like seals your pores, so the makeup and stuff doesn't go in there, it makes your face look nice and even and flat. It holds the makeup on. It's really good to have a really good primer. I have the Unique Primer. There's always a dupe, and that just means like a copy of, uh, I think it's Smashbox Primer. I'm not sure. Let me verify, but it's you use the Monistat Complete Care Cream. It's a powder to gel. Yes, Monistat. Same exact products, ingredients, and as everything as the primer. So you can use this just like about that much amount. Spread it on your face, and it does. It's a gel, and it turns to like a powder, but it seals your, your face as a primer. The problem with that is because it's not exactly the same. Well, with any primer even, when you use it because it does seal your pores, if you don't wash it off completely, you know, at the end of the day or take good care of your skin, you can break out from it because obviously you need to give your pores some air. So once a week, I always do a face mask or exfoliate even, use some face wash with like the, the little beads just to kind of really clean it off. Okay, let me have that. It's drying my face. Now I'm gonna do um, let me do some, I'm trying to think of what I could do for you guys, contour. Um, what can I use for you guys? So, for contour, I use, my favorite is this Beachfront Bronzer, Bronzer Unique. It's shade Malibu. Everyone does theirs different ways. This is how I do mine. On this palette, I know it's a little empty, but there's a matte and then there's a, a shimmer, both sides. I start off with the matte with this little, like, I'm sure you guys probably have this brush. This one's just a brand from Amazon. Any kind of little round brush. Not too big, it's gotta be small. It could even be smaller, like, say like this size. Either one. I personally use this. You're gonna contour your face according to your shape. Because I have a real round oval face, I want my, and my cheekbones are really high up here. So when you squeeze in, that's your cheekbones. I'm going to contour higher. If you have a different shape face, you might contour lower. You kind of have to look it up to see how, what's good for you. I, my face is going to be like this. So I'm just lightly starting off. You don't want to start off right here in your cheek because that the most color is going to be on the first swipe. And you don't want it a lot right there. So I'm always going to start and bring it this way. And then pick up some more product. Only on this side I'm using. I need to get more. If anyone wants to send me some more. Just kidding. Same with this. And then you're only going to want to go to where your pupils are right here, center of your cheeks, and an angled, so going down. See, when I squeeze my cheeks, it's only going to be on the top. I'm going to take a little more. I'm going underneath. And because I have a wide jaw, I'm going to do a little bit on the edges just to make my face look thinner and watch I'm going to explain it right around the edge and right on the bottom 
and I'm like stretching my face so I can get underneath. Might not be really noticeable to you, but this is gonna look thinner and then this side. Up close it does. And I'm just blending it out behind my ears into my neck. And that's what's gonna contour my face. I look really white now right now, but I promise you it'll it'll blend in. I'm taking a little more product and doing my forehead. If you have a big forehead, this is a good way to make it look small. I don't have really a big forehead. I just like the whole contouring of it. And I'm gonna take to contour your nose. So I take this kind of brush. So this one has two little angles. You can use, you know, like there's, let me think of where it is. Um, anything, even like these kind of brushes, anything that's like a longer brush where it's longer up here and thinner. You don't want something too wide. Something thinner where you could get a good angle. This one has a dual for me so I use both of these and I'll explain. So I'm going to take again just the matte side and I'm going to contour my nose. So I'm just going to take a real thin line and because I said my nose is crooked I'm going to shape it so it looks straighter. So I'm going to go straight down there straight down and then I don't go as close on the right side I go a little bit farther out and it's just gonna give the illusion that it's straighter just picking up more product and going in and you can either if you have wide nostrils you can cover up your nostrils and it'll make it look pinched is what they say. If you don't, you could just make a straight line like this and leave your nostrils some shade under here. I mean, it's really, again, you're gonna play with your, your makeup and your face to see what you need to do for you. go all the way up to my eyebrow and this is if you can even see it's just giving my whole face a, a shape and I have a lump right here too so I mean I just really just shape my nose you can just give it any kind of shading however your shape is and trick people into thinking that it's perfectly shaped. Now if you see from afar, it just, it looks straighter. But don't worry, I'm gonna blend it in. They always say makeup is a process, and that's true. It's gonna look funky at first, but once it all comes together, I promise you. To have pouty lips, you're gonna take a little bit of product and use any kind of tip. This, here I'll use a smaller one just for reference. I'm gonna put it right underneath the line of my lips and that's going to give you the effect of bigger fuller lips if you can see the shading already is pouty and I do a little bit on my cupid's bow just a very little I'm going to blend it out in a second so I don't want to do too much I go over this too so I go over this all with a bronzer, so I'll explain it to you. And why I go over it with a bronzer is because this just really sits, my makeup's still a little wet, and I still have to set it, so this is going to sit, like, really soak in. And then when I put powder, it's still going to really, it's going to look like it's really my skin tone. Okay. So I'm going to do it like that now. To highlight your face. You can use a highlighter, you can use whatever you want. I use 
here, two things. Um, no, let me do this. Sorry, backtrack. Cover Girl, I use again shade two shades lighter than your natural um foundation. This is fair. Cover Girl. So it's really light. Cover Girl dries fast this brand, so I'm gonna do this in different sections. I just do little tips like that. You can do a little bit right there. And I'm gonna explain it to you. Right here. A lot of girls will shade their nose like right here and give it like a little button nose shape. It really it depends on how your face is. I'm going to do a little bit over there. And I'm going to do under here too, but because this dries fast, I'm going to do sections. So I'm just dabbing it onto my chin, and it's going to give it a, like a brighter look. I'm dabbing this on here. Because I used a lighter um, foundation, you can't really, really see it in this particular look. But if I had my regular just organza foundation, you can you can see it. It's getting, gonna just look lighter. Sorry for my dog's barking. And with this, I'm gonna really just be careful about around my eyebrows. You're gonna want to put the concealer where you really really want the um, uh, setting powder to stick. So I'm just blending it out with my up there. So you can already see where it's like shiny and it gives your whole face like a, a highlighted look. And you can see, see how my nose is crooked? So I'm just gonna go with that. The story is my son was I was giving him a bath. And he was, I don't know, like six, seven, something like that. And he had his head underwater. And I was washing him and he whipped his head up from underwater and smacked me in my nose. And I saw stars and I know it was broken ever since. It's been horrible. I have my huge lump right there. But you can already see that it's taking shape. I'm very picky. And then for my face, so you're going to want to go a little bit under your eyes. People do like a sideways V, you can do three stripes, however you want. People do these designs on their face just for fun, honestly. You blend it and it changes shape anyway. So because I have where it's going to crease under there, see my wrinkles, I'm going to really, really push into my wrinkles. I'm going to put powder on over this and it's going to like really, really hold. And I'm just going to be very careful not to touch my contouring powder. So I make like, I almost like press in and it makes like a line right here. And that's how I know where to go. And then smooth up. And again, I'm almost like stamping is the word, I guess. And going right here, right above the contour. Just a nice sharp line. And same with this, I'm gonna stamp it. Taking product from right here and picking up and it's on my sponge. If you use a new sponge that doesn't, you know, you haven't used before, you're probably gonna add more product because new sponges, of course, soak more makeup up. Whereas this one I've used a few times, so it already has like, some product in it. Or else, like I said, you would damp, get it wet and that way it won't soak up so much. You can use your beauty blender. And again, there's different shapes, you can do that. Okay, and then underneath. Hold on, as I, as I go, I, I always blend, even though I'm gonna go over it again, but just telling you how I get, and you could already see, so I'm starting to take shape, it looks different. I'm putting one long stripe underneath here and here. And here's why. Let me put that away. You're going to want it to, they always say Neapolitan ice cream. This is key. So with your um, contouring, Neapolitan means like pink blush, contour brown, white. 
and I just take this again I'm picking a product and I like this um, wedge for this reason because I stamp it and I give it a real straight line right if I suck in right there all the way and it's gonna give a shadow and it looks like my face is you know contoured sculpted picking a product and then stamping I'm really picky about getting this straight line right here and it'll blend out you won't look like you have a stripe I promise you I'm just blending it out making sure it soaks in I match them make sure they're matched blend this part out a little more And you don't want it to look like you have like stripes. You can't see it. You don't want it to be noticeable. So I kind of go back and forth and blend a little bit. A lot of people when they do like their live videos, when I do my live videos, they don't really go through all of this stuff because you're trying to be quick and do a video and just do a tutorial. But I think it's important to let people know that, yes, you're going back and forth and touching up blending, stuff like that. Because you don't want to have like lines, you know, you want to be careful. If you have like, I have a bulbulous nose, and so you can just take a little bit of brown and angle it in, and it'll look more pinched. Like so. Just blending it out so it's not shiny. Okay. Now for setting. I'm gonna go back over that and you'll you'll see. Oops, don't tip. Okay, I know it's an hour, but this is I'm just showing you guys how to do it. Airspun setting powder, translucent. You could use whatever powder, finishing powder, anything you have. It is important to set your face. If you're going to your ball, if you're gonna go out, I live in Arizona, heat, anything is gonna sweat all this off because it's you have so much moisture and product on your face. Anything that's coming through your pores is gonna your face is gonna melt. I take a wedge, beauty wedge like this. You can again take a different blender, anything. It's gotta be, you know, some kind of sponge. And I go over where I did my concealer, where I did my highlighting areas. I'm gonna push it into my wrinkles. I'm pushing it into the concealer because it's now going to lock together with the concealer. It's locking in there. Anywhere where you have like any kind of wrinkles or anything where it, you know, it shifts. I'm going to like stretch my face like this and open up my skin and really get in there. 